hey folks we're going to be doing a how to ride a motorcycle and how to get your motorcycle license video you'll see a lot of these on youtube and they're very helpful for the new rider teaching them how to get their motorcycle our motorcycle of choice today is the uh, 2006 suzuki katana 600 and we're going to be taking it over here on the freeway uh, about that way and before we get on if you're new to uh, motorcycle riding, let me put this uh, camera in the visor so I can be hands-free. And we're going to show you what the levers do and where the brake's at and all that good stuff. Believe it or not, it's a little cold out here in California this morning, so I might have to keep the visor open just a bit so you guys can see this without it getting... Uh, fog on the visor. Now, uh, traditionally on uh, motorcycles, the right side's braking. This is the front brake. This is the throttle. Uh, that's the starter button right here. Right here where my thumb's at. Over here you have, uh, the Katana comes with a handy dandy fuel gauge. Shows that we're in neutral. There's our brights. There's an oil light right here not lit up but you can see the images here on the glass plastic clock here's the tachometer here's the speedometer right here you got your turn signals here and notice the way you do the turn signals is like thus and so and there's the other turn signal you push in to stop the turn signal here's the horn I'll do that later before we leave Hopefully I remember, I don't want to be honking the horn out of here. People come out and think I need to get their attention. Um, and as I said, we're on the 600. So now let's mosey along here and show you what's over here. Traditionally, the left side shifting. So this is the way you shift. Similar to a car, you know how you shift with your left hand and you put your foot in for the clutch. Here's the clutch. You pull this back and then you shift downward for first. And let me show you something. This is six gears. So all the way down is first, and then every time you go up, you could go up slightly from first to neutral, and then you go up again to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then you put your foot on top, and you go five, four, three, two. So the way you guys shift is right here, and that's the clutch lever in. So every time you want to shift gears, you pull this clutch lever back, which I'm going to show you, and then you move into the gear you want. Let's just get on and ride, and we'll do the horn later as we're going along. So there's the kickstand. It's way up front on the katana here. So put my foot like that. Pull back. Yeah, let's unfog this puppy here. Now, this is not a good bike to learn on because it's extremely heavy, but I like the heavy bikes because I'm going to be going on the freeway right now. And what we'll do is we'll go up here, turn around. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to pull the clutch lever in. We're going to kick down right here, go into first. And you'll be able to tell because, see, there's the neutral light. The neutral light will go off. So watch. I'm going to pull the clutch lever in, which I just did right here, see? Kick down. Keep the clutch lever in. You're going to slightly give it throttle by slightly releasing the clutch until you feel it catching and then notice we've totally released the clutch lever we're in first <clears throat> now we'll do a u-turn here let's see yeah when you're new kind of practice going around in circles and slow speeds as you know it's more difficult to balance at slow speed here's the horn can't really hear anything Typical motorcycle horn. Now, when you come up to a light or a stop and you can't go, right? Like here, I'll pull the clutch lever in and I'm kind of braking with my foot, my right foot there, and then I let the clutch lever out, gave it some throttle, because it's weird, there's no stop sign right there, so you just kind of slow down. Okay, so now we're gonna go up to the second, clutch lever in, kick up down there, where I showed you, to second, we're in second now. And we're going to come up to this stop sign, and then we're going to go left. So if you're new to riding, 
very important lesson is keep the front wheel straight when you're stopping straight. Watch this, clutch lever in. I slightly kick down, I'm in neutral, right? So I don't even have to hold the clutch lever in. I'm just braking, see that? And I use the front brake mostly. Now, when you get to a place like this where you can't see because the cars are blocking, clutch lever in, kicking down, giving it throttle. Clutch lever in, kicking up. We're in second gear. All right, so you got the idea. And remember we have six gears, so we're in second gear. And what you could do on most bikes in second gear, watch how I pull the clutch lever in. I just slightly tap down, watch the neutral light go on. See that? Now see how my hands aren't really doing anything. I'm just using the rear brake because I'm going and moving really slow. So you could stop like that. Okay, so we got the green clutch in, see? Kick down, I'm in first. Let's not go, because the truck's coming. Kind of balancing it. Another truck's coming. Uh, we'll wait for this guy here to play it safe. Okay, giving it throttle. Letting off the clutch slowly. We're in first. I will get on it a bit. Second. get on the freeway it won't do that anymore. Third. Clutch in, kick up to fourth. Now we're going to try to keep it in fourth and go around this corner in fourth unless I get this. See there's like a Costco there so I always tend to get this uh, majority of the time the red light but not this time the yellow light I got but I can go through that and here's the green so here we go now we're in uh, fourth right now we'll get on it a bit Clutch in fifth. Clutch in sixth. And now you're on the freeway, you see that? Just kind of settle in, enjoy the ride. And now we'll talk to you about how to get your motorcycle license. Bear with me a second, I'm making sure my pockets on my motorcycle jacket are all zipped. I have my cell phone in there. Okay, uh, how to get your motorcycle license. You know it's uh, very weird, in most states, if you just take the... Now, by the way, before we start this, I'm going to be referring to riding and written tests at the DMV. When we say riding, what we mean is what I'm doing now, riding on the motorcycle. And for sake of discussion, when I say written, that's with the pencil. You follow me? So, uh, what's really interesting, and I didn't know this until um, I went to go get my motorcycle license, they'll actually let you ride in most states if you just take the written test, W-R-I-T-T-E, and written test, they'll actually let you ride, but what they'll do is um, they'll give you some uh, restrictions on your license till you get your full-fledged training and your, you, you take your riding test, which is what I'm doing now on the motorcycle, they make you take that too. So there's two parts of the test, there's written with the pencil and riding where someone watches you ride and they see if you could pass the test. Get over here, a bunch of bumps. Now, what I would suggest doing is go take the written test with the pencil. Go to DMV. Um, if you already have your driver's license, they're gonna make you most likely take that at the same time. You're gonna take two tests. That way, every time it comes time to renew your license, 
you renew them at the same time. There's some people I know, speaking of that truck that I just had, that are truck drivers, they gotta take six, seven tests sometimes. Also, if they're hauling chemicals or different types of loads in their truck, they got, they've gotta take tons of these tests. So if you're a motorcycle rider and a car driver, every time you renew your license, if you're asked to go into DMV to do it, you're gonna be taking two tests, your written test with the car, and the written test with the motorcycle. It's not difficult. It's uh, moderately easy. So, um, what you do is, here's how I would do it. First, you go ahead and you go to DMV and take your written test with pencil. And once you've got that down, once you've taken that, they uh, should, most states do this, California, they do it, they should give you your motorcycle license with a few restrictions. Number one, you won't be able to do what I'm doing and ride on the freeway. You'll have to take the street. Number two, you won't be able to ride with a passenger on the motorcycle, regardless of where you're riding it. And number three, uh, you won't be able to ride at nighttime. But that's fine. That's all you need to start practicing, you know, is to be able to ride sometime. If you got someone that teaches you, or you can do what I did, I went to what's called MSF. Just those three letters. It stands for Motorcycle Safety Foundation, MSF, Mary Sam Frank. And there's an MSF, most likely, in your area. And what you do is you register with MSF. I think you could do it online at a website. They have a website. And then um, they'll teach you how to ride. You're going to need some equipment. You're going to need gloves. Get gloves, a helmet, and get some like high top motorcycle shoes. Um, if you don't have a lot of money for motorcycle shoes, go to a uh, like Big Five Sporting Goods or eBay, they have them so cheap there, like, they won't be like the best quality, but at least you kind of are able to take the MSF course, you know, without spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to take the course. So you go to MSF, and here's what's really cool about it, I'll tell you about my experience. They have, um, the first day you're there, they don't really let you sit on the motorcycle or anything. They just kind of get to know you and they uh, talk about different ways how you should ride and rules of the road, how to counter steer. I'll show you how to counter steer up here. Uh, different things like that. But on the second day, at least where I went, because you go like once a week um, for four weeks, I think it was. Don't hold me to it. I can't remember. Um, and um, for a couple of hours, it was pretty easy. It's not real time consuming. Um, so what happens is, <clears throat> then uh, the second week, if memory serves me correctly, is I'm pretty sure it was the second week. They tell you to make sure you come with uh, high top shoes and gloves. It's a good idea you bring your own helmet. They have some helmets there at the one I went to that you could use, but you really don't want to use those helmets. They smell horrible. You want to use your own. Um, okay, here's counter steering, by the way. I'm going to push forward this way. Forward and pull back this way. And watch. As you do that, see how it kind of leans the motorcycle like that? I'm pushing forward with this hand. When I say forward, I mean the way I'm going. I'm pulling back towards my rib cage here and that kind of counter steers the bike. They'll teach you a little bit about that. Now, um, once you, let's get on the throttle here. I think the bike is pretty much warmed up. Now, um, why are these people slowing down? Once you register for MSF and you're like your second week or so, it's really cool. They'll have all these little motorcycles. They're all like little 250s. 
they'll have like uh if you can get the kawasaki ninja 250 see if you can get that because they just have a bunch of motorcycles out there in the parking lot and then uh they say okay go pick a motorcycle like at least where i went they didn't assign you a motorcycle to be uh taught on so there's sort of like a mad dash everyone runs for their favorite motorcycle you'll see at least where i went Kawasaki Ninja 250s. You'll see some Honda Rebel 250s, which, just to give an example, Kawasaki Ninja 250 is similar to this plastic sport bike. Honda Rebel is like a cruiser style. A lot of you will say like the Harley Davidson style, you know, with the chrome and stuff like that. So you can kind of see if you can choose which bike you want to learn on and then when you uh, get on your the bike they don't really let you start riding it around which is good because you're new they're going to teach you some stuff see if this guy sees me. he's texting they're going to teach you all the levers they're going to have you push the push the bike forward with your legs like blocking it uh, then, little by little, they'll have you start the bike, and they'll have you give it a little bit of throttle. I mean, they really gradually bring you into it, so if you're a, you're a brand new rider, you'll like it. They don't just throw you into it. Then what they'll do is, um, they'll start getting the motorcycle going, and they'll have you put it in gear, and then take it out of gear without moving. They'll talk to you a lot about what's called the friction zone, which is the um, moment when you put the, the clutch in on your motorcycle and then you slowly let the clutch out and you feel it engage. And they call that the friction zone. So the reason why they teach you that is once you're kind of tuned in to where the friction zone is on your motorcycle, You'll know when to release the clutch, when to give it more throttle, all that good stuff. So, um, once you've got to learn the friction zone, and basically you're sitting there with your legs down on the ground, you know, you're, you don't have them up on the bank, and the motorcycle's running, you'll engage the uh, friction zone here with the clutch, and then, um, they said it's going to be very windy today, I can already feel the wind. You'll engage the friction zone with the clutch and slowly while releasing the clutch out, let's get around this guy, you'll move the motorcycle forward. Okay, so then And then, then what happens is once you're like moving the bike forward and stuff like that, even though your your feet are kind of down, and they'll tell you to pull the clutch lever in right away because they don't want you to crash. Um, then what they'll do is they'll say, okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to put your feet up on the peg and you're going to move the motorcycle forward after you let it into the friction zone. And then you're going to come over here and then you're going to pull the clutch in and brake and stop. They'll teach you how to brake and all that. So see how they're gradually getting you into it. They gradually got you to where... <laughs> Hold on, I got to get in front of this dude here. Alright, so then they... Um, they've got you moving the motorcycle now. So now it's they're, you're getting into it, right? So now what they're going to do is they're going to have you move forward and then brake. So you like to start moving the motorcycle forward, you brake and you put your feet down. They want to make sure you don't fall off. Like sometimes it's kind of difficult, you know, when you're new, you know, you don't put your feet down fast enough or you brake too hard and you tip over and fall on the bike. A few people fell, but you don't really get hurt because you're going so slow got your gear on and stuff. 
Okay, so then, um, as you get better at it, um, they'll have you start riding through like a little, what do you call it? Like a little, um, they have a little area mapped out. Obstacle course, that's what it is. They have a little area mapped out with cones. And they have you ride through these cones, like there's one cone on the left, one cone on the right, and it's that way all the way up to like, see how I'm in the lane? Just imagine the, the yellow stripe are all cones moving up there, and the right are all cones. So they have you kind of, you just follow the cones, and you go through the cones, and there'll be someone in front of you, and then someone behind you, and they kind of space it where you don't crash into each other. And as you go through the cones, and that's where it gets kind of fun, and wow, it's getting windy. That's when it gets kind of fun, uh, because you're going through those the cones, and now you're riding without stopping. You're just kind of going around in circles and stuff. A couple of things, uh, everyone always says, was there anything hard to do at MSF? Well, there was one thing I didn't really kind of get what they were trying to get us to do. For me, I, I didn't get it. I mean, I passed the course, but I didn't really get what they were trying to do. And here's what they do. They tell you, okay, imagine that there's a couch, you know, like furniture in front of you and you got to go up to it and then kind of like swerve around it. Well, that seems easy enough, but they don't really put any obstacle in your way. So you just have to like drive and pretend there's something there like you're swerving around it. And um, I guess because of legal issues that they're not going to put like some fake cardboard cut out of a couch there, you know what I mean? Someone crashes into it and it crashes and it gets sued or something. So you kind of feel weird that you're pretending there's a couch there, so you're like riding along like this and then all of a sudden you gotta go and like swerve, you know, like around the, the couch that's that there. Now, but here's here's the benefit of the MSF course, okay, it's really a good benefit. There's a large amount of people that fail the riding test, like I'm doing now, riding, at DMV. It's challenging compared to MSF, which is easier. Well, here's what's really cool. If you go to MSF, you can bypass the DMV riding test because you take your riding test at DMV. I mean at MSF. You can also take it at DMV, but you don't want to. It's more difficult, you know. So what's really cool, and that's why a lot of people go to MSF. That's why I did. If you go to MSF school, then you do not have to take the DMV riding test. Because let me tell you what they do at the DMV. They have you do stuff that you're never really going to do in real life. Like they'll have a figure eight and you have to really slowly go around this figure eight within the line. And if you go outside the line or if you put your foot down, it's like automatic fail. Now, I've been riding for years and years and years. I've never had to slowly go around a figure eight. <laughs> you know, without putting my foot down. I, I think I could do it now, and I've been riding for, for so long. But when you're new, it's hard. You know, you gotta just throttle the correct way and all that. Okay, so now, here's what happens. At, after you're done with it, MSF, they will have a test for you, a riding test, like I'm doing now. They also have a written test there, like a little written test you take. But it's easy. So when you go ahead and you're taking the riding test, there's a guy there with a the clipboard, there's usually two people there testing you. And they'll have you go through the obstacle course. They'll have you, you want to, they're going to test you where you go as fast as you can in a parking lot. And then you got to jam the brakes on 
and keep your motorcycle steady, they don't want to see you all sloppily braking, you'll pass it, don't worry, it's pretty easy. Just memorize what they told you, how to do it. It's like going to military boot camp, just do what they tell you to do, and it's the way they tell you to do it, and you'll be okay. So, after you um, go through all that, and you pass the test, you're done. My buckaroo. They give you. Let me go here. They give you this uh, certificate. Hold on. They give you this document, this paper, like a certificate thing that you take to DMV. Because now you don't have to take your motorcycle riding test. Because remember, you already took the written test at DMV. So now you just give them, you slap down your uh, certificate there that you got from MSF, and they'll give you your full-fledged motorcycle license. Then you can ride like I'm doing on the freeway. You can ride at night, you can have passengers, good stuff. MSF's fun too, you know. It's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Now, um, some people ask me, hey, uh, did anyone fail MSF when uh, you were there? Yeah, there was um, this girl that failed it, but she was really short, skinny, and, and I'm thinking, man, she's going to kill herself on a motorcycle. Not that short and skinny people can't be motorcycle riders, but she was just struggling with the motorcycle. I'm like, man, she's going to kill herself. And they did not let her pass, but the good thing is, is for free, they let you come back again through the court. So that's good. Uh, what else could I tell you? I guess I'll talk to you about some of my close calls. <laughs> if you look below this video in the description box, I'm going to put some of my close calls that I've captured on this helmet cam video. I mean, where people almost crash into you. Uh, I haven't crashed yet, thank goodness. But my mechanic, uh, where I take my motorcycles, he said, you know, there's really two types of bikers. Those that have crashed and those that will crash. So you always want to be wearing gear. We'll talk about gear, but don't forget to look below this video in the description box. Also, I'll put an annotation on this video where you can click it and see all my motorcycle videos where we talk about different things. But I'll just tell you about a couple of close calls and I'll talk about gear and then we'll wrap up this video. Um, one of my close calls you'll see was a little further up here, probably about five miles up, where I'm getting ready to get off the freeway. And just imagine I'm in the lane all the way to the right. And I'm just like right here in the middle of the road. And this guy in a truck flies by here because the person in front of him in the lane next to me just stopped. And I played the video back, and it is true, it kind of it wasn't really the guy in the truck's fault. The guy in front of him just stopped. You know how like people will start texting on their phone or whatever, then their subconscious mind. And I don't mean they stop like completely, but they put the brakes on to where they slow down so much that the guy in the truck couldn't slow down. He was coming a bit too fast, and he swerved into my lane and literally misses me by inches. And then we get to the light and he goes, hey man, I'm sorry that car in front of me just slowed down. I said, that's cool, thanks for not killing me. And we laughed it off. I've had uh, close calls where I'm riding in the lane and all of a sudden the car just goes like to hit you. They don't see you. So you gotta move real quick into the other lane. Like situations like this where you're all jumbled together a little more dangerous. 
Uh, I got videos of us riding in the rain. Uh, we've uh, done videos where we've ridden in very strong winds, where we show you how to handle the strong winds. Um, oh, but on gear, definitely see if you get some. Uh, if when you get uh, gloves, you know, see all these little rubber things on the glove. These things have like saved my hand so many times. My left, or my left, my right finger here, this pinky. What happened on my other bike, I was riding and see the uh, right brake lever here? I'm riding like this and all of a sudden a piece of metal or something, it happened so fast I didn't see what it was, what it was. It hit this lever and it smashed into my finger and my finger was killing me. It was all swollen. It swelled up so much. It was like the Incredible Hulk. It ripped through the glove. My my pinky finger. This is a brand new, brand new glove. I had to get for that purpose. Um, so that that little rubber thing right there. See this one right here? The one that's on my pinky. The big thick one that's kind of risen. That thing saved my finger, man. These knuckle protectors are important. Um, I wear earplugs that you can get at uh, hardware stores, these sponge earplugs, or you can get them at Walmart, and it lowers the sound down so you can hear, but um, it's not deafening. Um, I have these motorcycle pants, maybe I can show you the light. I have um, this jacket, it's got CE armor on it, like on the elbows, the back the shoulders. Let's see if I can show you. Um, see that elbow right there? So if I fall, of course the jacket's going to be shredded, but at least it kind of cushions your fall. <coughs> We're almost up to light. And I'll um, show you kind of the shoes that I have. I have um, these motorcycle shoes that are oil and slip resistant because you do put your feet down on a lot of oil all the time. If I get a red light, which I'm not. All right, let me show you. Um, See, um, I you can see it. Oh, I got a red light here. Downshifting. See, I'm coming to a stop. I'm braking. I'm now in neutral. I'm using this uh, front brake here on the right and the rear brake. Notice the front wheel is straight. But see, I have the motorcycle gloves, uh, motorcycle boots here. This has CE armor in it. Right here, my knee has CE armor in it. Um, I have a, uh, I'm wearing a Scorpion helmet, which is pretty good. I know some guys that have crashed and they've gone down on the concrete and they said the Scorpion helmets have saved their lives. I'm filming with the Kodak V570 camera. I think it's a, the best low, low cost helmet cam you can get. You can get them on eBay. It's a Kodak V as in Victor 570. It's got ultra wide angle lens. It's got image stabilization. So see as I move my head left to right, it's real smooth. Um, I'm going to see if I can show you my shoes a little closer. Well, anyways, you got the idea. It's steel toe. Have I got someone behind me? Yeah. Uh, they're steel toe. Um, one of the things, too, that I've been... Uh, using lately is I have these they're like these heat pack things that you can get at like a uh, camping you know when you go camping you can get these things and you rip them open they're like a little pack and it's full of all this little chemical stuff and you shake it and what happens is when you shake it it heats up and it lasts like up to six hours and I have those in my pockets right now, like where you would hold change or your keys, you know, in your front pockets on your pants. And what it does is it, um, it keeps you warm. 
because it's kind of chilly. I know I don't want to complain because you guys in Jersey uh, get all upset. Jersey, New York, when I'm talking to you about how cold it is in California. I get these emails from these Jersey guys. <clears throat> hey, what you talking about down there? It's not cold. I'll tell you what cold's all about, Shock. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Click the annotation here to see all my motorcycle videos and have a great week. You ride like the wind.